You know, the mission of our church is to love God, love people, and make disciples of Jesus Christ. And a few weeks ago, you know, we looked at the first part of that mission statement, which is to love God. Uh, You know, God is worthy of our complete devotion because of who He is and because of what He's done for us. And we also looked at uh, the fact that, you know, the loving God is, is really fundamental to the Christian faith. I mean, it's it's the, the foundation for living out a life following Jesus. Because of God's love for us, we love Him. And everything else flows out of that loving relationship, including loving people. We looked at that last week. Jesus said in Matthew 22 that the first and greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we unpacked that passage last week and we looked at uh, what love is. You know, love is actively seeking the good of another uh, and our neighbor is, are those our neighbors are those we come in contact with and so we are to love others whether they're Christians or not whether they believe the same things that we do or not we're to love them seek their good and uh, now this morning we want to look at the third and final part of our mission statement uh, because as we're loving people and I shared this I shared with you last week this truth that if we are truly seeking the good of those around us you know, we will be compelled to tell them about God's love for them in Christ. Because we know that's what we need the most. And so if you love someone, if you're truly seeking their good, you know, we are going to be compelled then to, to tell them about God's love for them in Christ. And so that's why the, the last part of our mission statement is to love God, love people, and make disciples of Jesus Christ. And so what I want us to do is I want to look at a uh, passage found in Matthew 28, because Jesus has commissioned us to make disciples. And so I want us to think about what that means. And uh, I want to begin by looking at the passage found in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. This is after God had, has re- had raised Jesus from the dead. He appears to his followers here in Matthew 28. And this is what he tells them. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, many of you are familiar with this passage. Uh, you've heard this passage probably many times. You've probably heard many sermons on this passage. Maybe, maybe even been in Bible study several times when this passage was the key text. Uh, but what's interesting is that although this is one of the most well-known passages in the Bible, it's also one of the most easily forgotten passages. And you know, most of us know this passage. We know what it says. We could probably even quote this passage. But I wonder how many of us could answer this question. You know, what does it mean to make disciples of Jesus Christ? We know what it says, but do we know what it means? And I wonder how many of us would say that we are actually actively fulfilling that mission. That we are actually involved right now in making disciples of Jesus Christ. You know, some of us may think that, well, that that gift really is for people that have the gift of teaching or preaching. That's those are the people that make disciples. Um, But not not so much for other folks that may not be uh, preaching on a Sunday morning or leading a Bible study. And so I want us to think about, okay, well, what is a disciple and what goes into making a disciple? Is it just for the select few? Or is it truly a commission, a mission uh, for the church as a whole? So I want to do two things here as we seek to gain some clarity into Jesus' command to make disciples. First, I want to define what a disciple is, which is very helpful. If you're going to make those disciples, what are they? And then two, I want to talk about how we do that. How do we make disciples? So let's define what a disciple is. I want to look at this passage again and listen to what Jesus says. He says, Uh, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe 
all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So in this passage, we have three participles that communicate continuous action. And we have one command. One command. And the command is to make disciples. Uh, the participles are go, baptizing, and teaching. But the command here is to make disciples. So Jesus is telling his followers that as you are going, then you are to make disciples by teaching, by baptizing. Um, and Jesus tells them, okay, as you go about that mission, I am with you. So Jesus tells them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And as you go about his work, he's with you in that work. Okay? So, let's define what a disciple is, though. What are we to make? Make disciples. You know, like uh, last night we celebrated my, my son's 21st birthday. We said, Ron, what, do you, what kind of cake do you want? And he said he wants a, a Coca-Cola chocolate cake. And if I told you, all right, I want, to, I want you to make a Coca-Cola chocolate cake, you would say, okay, I heard what you said, Ron. Make a ch Coca-Cola chocolate cake. Got it. And then you would ask, do you have a recipe for that? Because I hear what you're saying, but what is that? And what goes into that? I need to figure that out. That's how it is with making the disciples. All right, church, you go make disciples, okay? Well, your question needs to be, well, okay, Ron. Oh, what is that? What is a disciple? Well, think about this. Okay, we are to go into the world. And the, those early followers of Jesus were to go into the world. As they were going, they were to make disciples by baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that Jesus commanded. And so think about the progression of a person. There was a time when you did not know Christ. Someone then invited you to become a follower of Jesus. You placed your faith in Christ. Uh, you were baptized and you began to learn about you know, what God has for you through his word. And you began to learn more about who God is, what he's done for you. You begin to learn what he wants you to do and you begin to grow in your obedience. That's what a disciple is. So that's what we are to make. So if I had to sum it up, I would say a disciple is a growing follower of Jesus. That's what a disciple is, a growing follower of Jesus. So if you're taking notes, you need to write that down, because when I mention disciple, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we are seeking to make, growing followers of Jesus. So the mission of our church is to love God, love people, and make disciples. Help people become growing followers of Jesus. That is the main mission of the church. Now, there are other things the church should do. And ought to do. But whatever we do, we need to make sure that we're making disciples. Because that's the one thing Jesus said, this is really what I want you to do here, is make disciples. I mean, think of it like this. Let's say, uh, let's say you're married and your wife asks you to go to the grocery store to buy some milk. Okay? So you're like, being a good husband, you agree. And you make your way to the grocery store. And you get there. And then you forget what she asked you to buy. Not that that's happened to any of you. But you get there and you're like, okay, what, is, what, what did she want me to get again? But instead of calling her, you decide, you know what? I think, I'm going to just try to remember. I think she asked me to bring back some bread. So you grab a loaf of bread. You make your way back home. And you say, honey, well, I got the bread. And then what is she going to say? You're supposed to bring home milk. You might say, well, what's wrong with bread? Is there, what's, what do you have against bread? There's nothing wrong with bread. Bread is good. But that's not what she asked for. Right? She asked for milk. And so as a church, what we need to be careful of is that we're just not bringing home the bread. But we, make, we need to make sure that we're bringing home the milk. The one thing Jesus asked us to do, which is make disciples. So yes, we can be involved in a lot of different things. But we must make sure that we're doing this one thing. Because that's what he asked us to do. To make disciples. And this is why this command is in our mission statement. Love God, love people. But that's not all he told us to do. Love God, love people. But make disciples of Jesus Christ. So we have to allow that mission 
to guide everything that we do uh, so that we don't find ourselves bringing home all these different types of groceries and we forget the milk, right? We want to get the main thing that Jesus called, called us to do, which is to make disciples. So what is a disciple? A disciple is a growing follower of Jesus. That's what it is. That's what we're seeking to make, which prompts the question, how do I do that? How do we do that? How do we as a church make disciples? How do we as a church help people become growing followers of Jesus? Well, let me just say this. None of us are going to just drift into disciple making. It's just not just going to happen. You know, it's going to require intentionality and it's going to require us to work together as a team. Uh, it requires every member of the church to be actively involved in the process. It's not just for me to do, to preach a sermon, uh, because disciple making is not just about information. It's not just information transfer. If that was the case, we could just sit at home and watch online services and be good to go. But that is not what disciple making entails alone. It does require information, but that's not all it requires. It requires the church exercising our gifted, giftedness, all that God has given us <clears throat> to help people become growing followers of Jesus. So I want you to think about this. What does that look like for you personally as a member of the Hill Baptist Church? How, how can you help people become growing followers of Jesus? And as I was thinking about this, I, was, I think, you know, there's there are really two main ways that each of us can be involved in making disciples. We can invite and we can invest. Okay? We can invite and we can invest. You know, people become followers of Jesus because they are invited to follow Jesus. You know, Paul said it this way in Romans 10, 13 through 15, and then also verse 17, he says this. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how would anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. And then down in verse 17, it says, so faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. So people become disciples, followers of Jesus, when other people invite them to follow Jesus. You know, last night, like I mentioned, we had a, a 21st birthday party for Ron. Turns 21 this week. It's hard to believe. But it's happening. So we uh, sent out an invitation about midway through the week to our family. and said, we're going to have a uh, 21st birthday party for Ron. Saturday night, y'all come over. Uh, we're going to have some food and we'll have the Coca-Cola cake and some other activities planned for him. Well, Sunday, I mean, Saturday rolls around and Saturday evening. And uh, guess who shows up to the party? Well, no surprise. The people I invited show up. You know, not one random person came into my house. Said, hey guys, what's going on? I heard there was a party. You know, nobody, no one was just walking down the street in the Waverly neighborhood and say, wow, look at all these cars. I think I'll go in here and just check out what's going on. Didn't happen. Just didn't happen. Why? Because they weren't invited. They didn't know what was going on. The people that came to the party were those who were invited. You go to birthday parties because you're invited. You go to weddings because you're invited. People follow Jesus because they're invited. And we, as the church, are the ones that are to be inviting those outside that don't know Christ. We're to be extending those invitations uh, so that others can follow Jesus. And you know, there are two ways we can do that. One way is that we can actually share the gospel with someone. You know, God may give you opportunities to enter into spiritual conversations with those you know, and you may have the opportunity to share with them about God's love for them in Christ, what Christ has done for them, so that they can become followers of Jesus. 
Uh, now, let me ask you this question. If a friend of yours, maybe you started talking about life, and they say, you know, I really want to become a Christian, but I don't know how. Can you tell me? If someone asked you that question, how confident are you that you could tell them how to become a follower of Jesus? You know, one tool that we have for you that may help you become more confident and fluent in being able to share the gospel message with a friend is this little book. It's called, Would You Like to Know God Personally? And it's actually out here in the Welcome Center. You can pick up a copy. But it's basically it just goes through the gospel message that you know, God loves you. He created you to know Him personally. But man is sinful. You know, we've gone our own way and we're separated from God. God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. And by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, we can have forgiveness for, for our sins and we can be given eternal life. And you simply learn how to share that message with others and you can invite them to follow Jesus. So I encourage you, if you need to become more fluent in that, pick up one of those little booklets, read through it and become more fluent in being able to invite people to follow Jesus. There's a second way, though, you can invite people, and that is you can invite them into spaces where they learn about Jesus. Like this space here. You can invite them to come and worship with you here and they can learn about Jesus. Uh, they can hear about what it means to follow Jesus. You can invite them to a Sunday school class or a Wednesday night Bible study. You can invite them into spaces where they can learn to follow Jesus. And so those are the two main ways uh, that you can extend those invitations. And one of the things that we're going to start doing in March that may help in that is we're going to... Once a month, on the fourth Sunday of the month, we're going to call them uh, Invite Sundays. We're going to hopefully invite people all, all month long, okay? So feel free to invite them anytime. They can come anytime. But on the fourth Sunday specifically, we're going to have special Invite Sundays and that we'll have everything like we normally do, but we'll also make sure that we have a very clear gospel presentation in the service. And we may also have some other additional uh, things for them out in the Welcome Center and whatnot to, to make it even more special for guests. And so every month leading up to that fourth Sunday, we're going to be praying and trying to invite people to join us for worship so that they can learn what it means to follow Jesus. So be thinking about that, praying about that as we seek to be generous with our invitations. Uh, the second way we can make disciples is by investing. So we can invite, and the second way we can all be involved in making disciples is by investing. If you go back to Matthew 28, what's interesting about what Jesus says to his followers, he says, you know, go and make disciples of all nations, but he's not talking to individuals. It's not like he pulled Peter aside and said, okay, Peter, this is what I want you to do. You go make disciples. The rest of you, this is what I want you to do. No, he says, you all, y'all, make disciples. This is what you are to do as a group. And so disciple making is not just a lone ranger activity, but it's actually a, a mission for the whole church. It's a team effort. You know, we're, we need to all be together in this mission as we seek to help people become growing followers of Jesus. So it doesn't matter what your gifting is. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter what type of personality you have. Uh, we can all be involved in making disciples of Jesus Christ, helping people become growing followers of Jesus. Let me just give you an example of how this would work. Let's say you're at the grocery store and you're waiting in line. Line's fairly long, not terribly long, but it's fairly long. So you're waiting there just trying to get ready to check out. And uh, you look behind you, and there's a young lady. Her name's Kim, you find out. Her name's Kim, and she has a few children with her. And while you're waiting on this line, you ask her, well, you know, Kim, uh, you know, it, it seems like these days these grocery stores are just trying to push everybody towards self-checkout. You know, that's all we got now, self-checkout. No cashiers anymore. And she says, well, where we just recently moved from, all the grocery stores still have cashiers. And you say, oh, well, where'd you move from? She said, well, we were in Kentucky where my husband was doing his residency. And then you say, well, how long have you been in Augusta? 
And she said, well, about six months we've been here um, settling in. And you say, well, uh, have you all been looking for a church to attend? And she said, yeah, actually, we have looked at a few. We visited a few. And then you say, well, I'd love to have you come and visit our church, the Hill Baptist Church. I have a little card in here with uh, the website and the address. And love to give it to you. And right about that time, the cashier, well, the self-checkout register, uh, becomes open and available. And you're like, well, i got to go check out. But here, take this. You know, I'd love to see you at church sometime. You go in. You ring up your stuff. Your head now and say, it's nice to meet you, Kim. Maybe we'll see you one Sunday. Okay. A few Sundays pass. Uh, and then Kim decides to talk to her husband, John, and say, you know, John, I met this person and in the grocery store self-checkout line. And they uh, mentioned that we should try out their church. And I think, you know, this Sunday we're free. We should, we should go try it out. So the first thing they do is they go to the website, hillbaptist.com. Check it out. Try to get a feel for what it's going to be like. Uh, I'm excited about this, and that is we're, on this little side note, we're about to launch a new website uh, in the next few weeks, which will greatly help us with this uh, area of making disciples, especially the inviting part. So pray that that uh, rolls out smoothly. So they go to the website, they check out, okay, this is where the church is, this is where we could park, um, this is what time the service is, that kind of thing. And so they decide, you know what, let's, let's try to get there about 1045 just to give us enough time to park, make our way in, figure out where we need to go in, and all that kind of thing. So they come in, and they park up on the Millage Roadside parking lot. And, you know, they see some signage, so they begin to walk down the sidewalk uh, on Kingsway there, and they begin to see these signs that helpfully, you know, kind of guide them along, thanks to uh, Stephanie working on that and designing those signs for us. And so they're walking around, and they say, oh, there's a sign, main entrance, this way. As they kind of come up to this breezeway between the social hall and sanctuary, they uh, meet Roy. And Roy uh, greets them, welcomes them, and says, yeah, just right this way. Here's the main entrance, right this way. And so they start walking toward the welcome center. As they get close to the door, uh, Wayne opens the door for them, welcomes them. As they come in, uh, they see a, this, this little table there with this black tablecloth with our logo on it. Uh, Rachel standing behind it. And they come in and, and they walk up to the desk. And Rachel greets them. Make sure they have a worship guide. She also notices that they have two small children with them. And so she explains to them that you know, during the worship service, we'll have children's church, which is an opportunity for the kids to, to go to a uh, classroom and have more of an age-appropriated lesson, a Christ-centered lesson for them. And just about that time, Cassidy walks by with her kids. And Rachel waves Cassidy over and says, I want to introduce you to Cassidy. And uh, Cassidy, this is Kim. Kim, Cassidy. Uh, and, she's, and Rachel says, you know, Cassidy, could you help Kim after the service? If her kids go to children's church, can you help her navigate the building to find the children's classroom? Because, you know, that can be a challenge. And so Cassidy's like, sure, yeah. And then Cassidy also says, well, Kim, why don't you all sit with us during the service? So they come in, sit down. Um, they hear a few announcements, and then Jim begins to lead in, in the worship through song, and they participate. And uh, you know, some of the words of the song really begins to really get them thinking about who Christ is and what He's done for them, and um, God's love, God's grace, God's holiness, His truth. Uh, and then, you know, we open the Word together, and you know, I, I preach on a, a passage of Scripture that day, and um, some some things that I shared, some truths that I shared you know, resonated with them and kind of stuck in their minds a little bit. And, and then uh, after the service, you know, people would come by and greet you. Welcome, glad you're here. Good to see you. And then, you know, Cassidy helps guide them up the maze to the uh, children's church classroom and to retrie retrieve their children. And then they make their way back to the, uh, the car in the Millage Road parking lot. And they get all the kids buckled in and they start riding down the street. And then Kim says, well, what would you think? And John says, well, I mean, people were very friendly, welcoming, um, and um, it was good. And he says, well, what did you think? It was good. And she said, you know, I think uh, especially, you know, some of the songs, some of the words in there really uh, got me thinking. And, and then some of the truths that were shared in the sermon, especially that truth about how God has saved us by grace alone, through faith alone and Christ alone, that really stuck with me. And got me thinking about some things. 
And, uh, and then Kim said, well, do you think we should go back? Now, hopefully, we hope they would say, yeah, yeah, we would love, I think we should go back. Now, here's my question for you. Who helped them become growing followers of Jesus that day? Who was it? I would say every interaction had the potential to move them forward spiritually. Every interaction from even the website to encountering Roy, to Wayne, to Rachel, to Cassidy, to people that were greeting them in here, to the Psalms, to the children's church lesson that pointed them to Jesus, their children, to the sermon, to after the service. Every interaction was an opportunity to help them become growing followers of Jesus. So I would say all the above, all the interactions were investments into helping them become followers of Jesus. It wasn't just the teaching. It wasn't just the singing. It wasn't just one usher or the website. All of it. All of us together, working together, helping somebody become a growing follower of Jesus. That's what it means as a church to make disciples. It's not just a Lone Ranger activity, but it requires a team effort. All of us being involved together together sharing our gifts, loving on one another, encouraging one another, teaching one another, challenging one another, praying for one another, uh, sharing our resources with one another so that we can have a place to meet in that's clean and uh, welcoming to others, having signs we can purchase to guide people, Bible studies that we can purchase to take people through. I mean, all of this comes together as we all participate together by using our time, our talents and our treasure as we all bring those together for a common goal. That's what helps us make disciples. That's what helps us help those around us uh, become growing followers of Jesus. And so what I want to do is I just want to encourage you uh, and, and me my, and myself as well. I want to encourage us to be more generous in our invitations. You know, the challenge is with like a wedding, like Brandon and Kaylee will tell you, you only can invite so many people because you're limited. But the good news about the kingdom of God is there's no limit. I mean, we can invite as many people as possible. And so we should be very generous in our invitation. Uh, And we should be very generous in our investing. Look for ways we can invest in those that we come in contact with so that they can become growing followers of Jesus. So discipleship requires both inviting and investing. Inviting and investing. And no matter who you are, no matter what your gifting is, no matter uh, how old you are, how young you are, uh, whether you are outgoing or introverted, everybody can be involved in disciple making by inviting and investing. Every one of us can invite and invest. And if we're going to be a church that makes disciples, then we need to become more generous in our inviting and in our investing. So as we close, I just want to ask you two questions. One, who can you invite? Who can you invite? And the second question is, how can you invest? Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the people that you uh, placed in our lives that invited us to know Jesus, to follow Jesus. I know many of us are are thinking of those people even right now as we think about those who invited us to place our faith in Christ. Or maybe they invited us to a church service or a a church camp or, um, or maybe it was just invited us for coffee to talk about spiritual things. God, we... We follow Jesus now because of the invitation that someone gave us. Um, We're a part of this church family because of an invitation. We are part of a Sunday school class because of an invitation. And Lord, we're thankful for the people that invited us. And Lord, I just pray that you would put it on our hearts and minds to be inviters. Help us to invite those around us to follow Jesus. 
Help us to invite those around us into spaces where they can learn what it means to follow Jesus. And God, help us to invest. Help us to invest in people and help them to become growing followers of Jesus. Show us ways that we can uh, engage with people in prayer and encouragement and teaching in so many different ways of service. Lord, help us to know how we can best invest in the people we come, come across so that they can know Jesus, follow him, and uh, so that we as a church can make disciples. Well, I pray and trust that you would put those on our minds, those ways, those people this week as we seek to fulfill your mission that you've given us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.